Hi there, welcome back. This is gonna be a follow-up video for uh, some of the comments and suggestions that have come up over the last couple of videos uh, where people were asking for a little more detail on my enclosure and also my spoil board. So those things are very personalized to how you're gonna work or what's important to you, the space you have to work with, or re 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 with regards to the spoil board, it's really gonna be relative to what type of work that you're gonna do and um, how you wanna go about holding your work down. What, what I can tell you about work holding strategies is of the failures that I've had with my CNC, uh, any projects I mean um, that didn't come out right, almost all of them have been that I had not properly secured the work to the table. It came loose during the job. And of course I had uh, bad results when that happened. So let's get into this and I'm just gonna start with the enclosure. Uh, it's probably gonna be more a uh, type of video that I'm gonna tell you the things that I learned after I did it. Um, I, I have ordered a uh, X-rail that is longer than, um, or I guess effectively wider than the one that I have with my uh, original equipment. Um, and so that's gonna mean that I'm gonna have to rebuild this uh, enclosure and probably the table, um, which is a great opportunity for me because there are things that I left out of this build that I'm finding were important, but I didn't know what I didn't know at the time. and just kind of went nilly, willy nilly into the build uh, without considering certain things, specifically uh, maintenance that's required on the machine. I, I really didn't leave myself uh, a great way to, to gain access uh, to those maintenance points. So uh, I'll just give you a quick overview here that uh, I, what was important to me was, uh, I guess let me continue to talk about that, was having the dust primarily controlled by the enclosure. Uh, I have found that there are people out there who have built some uh, enclosures that are meant to reduce the sound um, that's evident in the workspace. But I can tell you that unless you're gonna use sound deadening material, um, which I just wasn't gonna do just for the bulky nature of it. Um, you know, some people are using things like uh, uh, styrofoam board or even carpet or towels. There's a lot of different ideas out there. Uh, mine is just built with plywood and um, as a result, it doesn't reduce the noise as much as you might think it would, but really that wasn't the key feature for me. I, w I wanted the dust to be controlled. So um, that was my main strategy in, in building this, this enclosure. So uh, let's get into it just a little bit. I'm gonna move the camera back um, and, and try to show you it without jogging you around too hard with the camera. So sit tight, relax, let's look at what works and we'll even talk about the things that aren't gonna work and are gonna be changed in my next version. But thanks for joining. Okay, so the first thing I would comment is that I made uh, this enclosure to sit atop a base that is somewhat modular, so it could be changed in the future. So uh, everything underneath the torsion box is one part, and then the torsion box and above is really the modular part. So when I do rebuild my top, I'm going to be able to use that uh, that bottom piece again, I believe. So the basic construction of it is the table itself that the Onefinity sits on is 52 inches by 52 inches, and it really doesn't provide any additional room on the sides. That's really about as tight as I think you could make it. In fact, my controller is parked off to the side and really just screwed to the side of the enclosure itself, okay? So on the front, I knew that I wanted to be able to see the machine as it was running, and so I've done a couple things, just really cutouts inside of uh, uh, the doors so that I had some plexiglass installed, and uh, that way I can see the machine and also a couple of little ports on each side that you'd be able to see you know, if you wanted to see the side of it. Now, um, let's open this up and I can tell you that one, one strategy I wanted to be able to do was make the machine as accessible as I possibly could. So you're gonna see this piece across the top, which I put a little tape on there because that's a real head banger. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put this up on the mount. So this piece here uh, can be lifted up out of the way 
and that way it gives you a little more head space to come in and um, do maintenance on the on the piece or just gain access deeper into the working area if you needed it now it would be difficult to tell but I, this is a little bit uh, crammed in here so uh, i'm not going to move my table out but in the back you can see possibly the seam there where uh, in, in the back of the machine I do have a flap uh, that will open so that I can tile work out the back of it if I needed to. Now I mentioned uh, talking about some of the things that I did not do that I should have. So on this particular machine, uh, the maintenance involves putting some three and let me move this up. And when you talk about how close did I build it to just close enough. Um, so at any rate, on these rails here, there are some lubrication points that are back behind um, this carriage assembly here. And because of the tight nature of my enclosure, it's really not enough room to really gain access the way that you should. Um, to be able to do that. So in my next evolution, when I have to rebuild this because of the uh, journeyman size X-rails that are coming, um, what's gonna be included there are some access points on the side so that I can open up the side essentially and get in there and uh, put some maintenance to the machine where it's needed. So because the machine, you know, needs to be elevated to a good working height that gives you an opportunity for some storage down below. And as you can see here, um, what I have in there is a modular drawer holding section. So that's really just a carcass uh, that holds the uh, little sustainers on the right and also the framework for the drawers to go into on the left. And that's proved to be pretty darn handy. All right, now some folks have asked about dust collection and uh, wire control or, or a wire management system. So the first thing I'll tell you is that I've got a, a four inch system coming into the machine and as inelegant as it may seem, as I know some people have really made some, you know, extravagant boom arms and so forth, uh, what you're seeing up there and what is on the other side are essentially two toilet ducts that typically go under a toilet into subflooring. They just happen to be the perfect size and had a flange uh, that could be screwed down to my lid and has worked out great. And so uh, I know some people are concerned about the hose twisting around or becoming bound up. Well, the machine really never does too many circles that, that aren't undone. And every time uh, that you're gonna take your dust boot off to change a bit uh, and whatnot you'll feel it if the if the hose is bound up and you can you can correct it but it's, it's never presented a, a problem for me so I'll, I'll link it below there's a person and i forgot their name uh, but i will link it down below but this drag chain here has been a nice ad because you can route all your wires into it and then they come out and they can go into another drag chain uh, down below for uh, final destination, you know, the control box or power, etc. cetera. So um, it, it's a nice way to tidy up your wires and the person who designed it did a real good job. Um, again, the link for that will be below. Okay, so spoil board uh, questions that have come up is, you know, which design and what should you use to hold work down and do you prefer T-Track or the T-Nuts or insert nuts that are driven in or dog holes? And I can tell you that when I started out, I didn't know which one was going to work best for me. And there was a person who had started out a design that I liked. I have ended up modifying it once I understood the software better. And what I can tell you is that if you, if you choose to purchase someone else's design or use a file that was created by someone else that's totally understandable especially if you're new to the software but this is really going to be one of the first things that you're going to do and in my mind it's a great way to understand the machine and or whichever software you're using so what i'm going to point out here is that so i'll just start here so this is a dog hole and i have work holding fixtures that can 
uh, fit into that dog hole and then I can use it for a couple different ways to hold work down. The parts next to it, which you can see there are many of, are insert nuts and those are screwed in from below and what you would do is screw in, and I'll show you in a moment, some fixtures. I happen to have some oops clamps uh, that are sold by Onefinity uh, that do a nice job. But again, once you get your machine up and running, you can manufacture your own uh, hold down clamps. And then lastly, I do have T-Track in here, which is probably the thing that I use the least, but it's nice to have it as an option. Okay, so earlier I mentioned these threaded inserts and they come in, excuse me, these, sorry, I'm, I'm still used to making video, getting used to making videos, so pardon me. Uh, but these insert nuts that are down here are screwed in from below and this is what they look like. They are, uh, let me see if I can change my focus. Camera's not cooperating. So these are the insert nuts. Hopefully it will focus in on those. Um, and that's one type, but there's another type available. And, and I'll probably do a picture in picture to show you uh, the difference between these. Uh, but the, the brass colored ones, they get screwed in. Uh, the interior of the head of the screw has an Allen key and that's how you screw it in. Whereas the other ones quite literally get pounded in uh, from below. Um, you just line them up and then drive them in with a hammer. I prefer the screwed in version just because I feel that that's a little more uh, affirmative, you know, solid connection to the MDF. MDF is not well known for um, being a material that accepts fasteners well. And so uh, the coarse threads on these insert nuts seem to work really, really well. I've not had any of them fail. So when it comes to work holding, my favorite method is double-sided tape because it's quick, it's easy, and there's not a lot of risk of anything getting damaged. So because I have machined all these holes with the slats in place, what I know is that they are square with the X and Y, uh, X and y measurements of the machine. So I would simply put in these dog hole, dog bench hole, uh, excuse me, these dogs, slide it up into a position where now I know it's square with the machine. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is use some double-sided tape and I would simply find the best layout. And I'm, I'm not gonna go crazy on uh, the tape here because this is a piece that's off of a, a project, an active project that I have. So uh, I don't, I don't wanna spend a lot of time taking the tape back off. But as you can see, this double-sided tape goes on easy. And I'm not taking a lot of care with this because this is just for demonstration. So with it hovering above the spoil board, I'm going to come into contact with my dogs, slide over to the other dog, then just give it a firm rub. And then just to avoid Sorry, I still have to clean up some of those dog holes. Uh, just to avoid any chance of a bit running into those which happen to be made of aluminum, I'll remove them because all I was using those for in that case is alignment. And it would be hard for you to see um, through the camera, but I can tell you that this <clears throat> is really on there, okay? And if you observe when I take it off, and this is Sapile, uh, that I've happened to use for this example. I'm gonna peel this off just so you can see. It doesn't really leave any residue, and if there happens to be a, a little piece here or there, a little rub with your finger, and it's all off. No must, no fuss. And I have not really had any problems with this double-sided tape whatsoever. Okay, so then another way that you could uh, hold your workpiece down is using uh, these oops clamps or something like it and it is simply uh, a way for you to put downward pressure on your workpiece and so this is where you would use these threaded inserts simply align the piece 
screw that down and I have not grabbed the correct length um, bolt. I can tell you I've only used these oops clamps once because I found that I almost immediately favored the double sided tape method. But you could put these in a variety of positions and because they're plastic on the end given that you position them correctly which I'm not doing a great job of um, you would tighten that down and maybe you'd put another one on this end and that's going to hold the workpiece down and hopefully if you do run into the clamp you're just going to run into the plastic and that's the idea behind those and then coming back to the dogs uh, the dog holes so if I were to slide these in here put them down firmly now I but my workpiece up against these two and because again these have been machined in a perfectly straight line I could then use a clamping element similar to this here there, there are many different types doesn't have to be this one but you simply would push that up against and then ratchet that tight and then that workpiece is really not going to go anywhere okay so there is one other method that we'll cover before we call it a day and it is the tape and CA glue method that you may have heard about, but just in case you've never seen it, I thought I would demonstrate it here today. So we're going to protect the workpiece by putting blue tape on the part that's going to go down on the spoil board. Then we'd put blue tape also on the spoil board. And then we're just going to apply some CA glue to the workpiece on the tape. And we're going to do a good job of lining those two up because you don't want to glue it to your spoil board. You want that glue to land on the opposing side of tape. And if we give that just a moment, that's going to set pretty quick. Could have used accelerator, but I couldn't find it in my shop. All right, so by using the activator, now that's that's on there. And the primary thing is it's going to give you a lot of lateral resistance, but yet because it's on tape, it's going to come off in such a fashion that you can just peel the tape off your workpiece. And other than where I sprayed it with some accelerator, you would never be able to tell that that was held on with super glue. Okay, so I hope some of the extra details may have um, helped you as, as you consider to either build an enclosure, and in my case, kind of know the things to avoid, uh, leave yourself a way to maintain the machine and the key areas that require it. And then also with the spool board, I, I have probably one huge uh, piece of advice for that. And it is simply to don't overthink it. Um, I can tell you that I've had multiple versions of this as I have kind of used it as a way to get used to the machine or uh, get used to the way that I would hold work to it. Um, this certainly gives you a lot of options uh, and is a, is a good way to, for me anyway, to get it done. But I know people who have great success with just one piece of MDF and uh, the nail stuff down, screw it down. Um, so I would tell you that, especially if you're still waiting for a machine or thinking about a machine, look uh, for other ideas um, th that may inspire you or, or you might be able to connect with as a way that would make sense to you uh, about how you're gonna use your machine. So I appreciate it. And if you have any suggestions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave those below. I do read all of them and I appreciate that you take the time uh, to leave them. And if you don't mind, please like and subscribe uh, to the channel as there will be more coming forward, uh, not just CNC, but also other woodworking related stuff as well. So thanks very much and have a great day.